Hey everyone, welcome. It's Caleb. This is episode four of your Web3 programming series. In the previous episode, we talked about how to deploy to an Ethereum testnet. So we got our first contract. You can see it up on Etherscan, but it's honestly pretty inconvenient. I prefer to not have to, you know, go into MetaMask and confirm every single transaction. It can just take forever. So an alternative option is instead of using injected Web3, you can use a JavaScript virtual machine. And you can see in the little pop-up says, execution environment does not connect to any node. Everything is local and in memory only. So when you do this, you're basically going to have these accounts here and everything is running local. So you don't have to worry about working with MetaMask. I'm just showing both options so you know of both. Sometimes you'll want to use the injected Web3, especially if you're interacting with other tools out there. If you're just learning and you just want to work on something very quick, I prefer the JavaScript VM. And all you have to do is hit deploy. And I wanted to mention as you hit deploy multiple times, you'll see these add up here. So make sure you're working with the right one. So basically if you go in here and you make some change to the code, which by the way, if you need, you can zoom in here. If you're changing the code and then you deploy and then you go open it down here, you gotta make sure you click the right one so you're not actually working with a previously deployed software. So you can clear that out hitting this button and then deploy. And you can see it's much faster than if you use the injected Web3. So if you do injected Web3, you have to deploy, and then you have to confirm that transaction, set up the gas, and yeah, kind of a pain in the butt. Then we wait, and finally it's done, and you can start interacting with it. But then anytime you need to modify data, it's another transaction and costs more gas. So the cost really isn't a problem, but you know, you have to worry about running out of testnet ether. And if you're working with multiple accounts, you know, maybe you're testing, sending something from one address to another. Well, then you have to deal with all of that having multiple wallets. Not too handy when instead you could just have an entire list of accounts ready for you here. So let's go through and deploy and see what that looks like. So now we deploy and we can store a value in here like 500 hit store and it's pretty much instant and now we can retrieve and we get that value back 500. Now I've talked a little bit about gas deploying transactions costs gas so there's a cost to deploying and you can see that was subtracted from this account automatically for you and anytime you do something that costs gas it just does it for you so take a look here this ends in 587 if we go in here and store a new value let's say 5001 we hit store well, now it ends in 951. We do it again, and it ends in 315. And you can see the total value is going down every single time we interact with our contract. Actually, retrieving data doesn't cost anything, so this is 315 right now. We hit retrieve, we get the new value, and it's still 315. So you can read data without any cost, but writing data costs. I'm gonna say while you're learning, don't worry too much about the cost of things. You might wanna get a better understanding of how gas works and how it's calculated, but optimizing for gas, I believe is an optimization you should be worrying about much later, not as you're a beginner. The point of this now is to just learn how things work. And then once you have a contract that's ready to be deployed to mainnet, you can go through that and figure out if there's any optimizations you can make for gas. And if you're new, you might be wondering, what, what are you talking about? What kind of optimizations? Well, the way you design your code is going to change how much gas is required from the users of your contract. Right now, we're just using our contract ourselves because we're testing it out. But eventually we're going to share this contract out with the public and people are going to be able to interact with it. And we don't want that to be a very expensive action, right? We want this to be as cheap as possible for our users. And just to show you how important this is, when you launch something, for example, this was an NFT set for other side, so NFT land and stuff like that for a game, there was a hundred million in gas fees that were potentially unnecessary. And this was some really bad PR, a huge waste of money. 
they may have been able to spend a little bit of money to have someone look over the contract, see if there were any gas optimizations. And this is interesting talking about some of the optimizations that could be made. So we're not going to worry about anything like that right now, but I do want to get a better understanding of gas. So we're going to talk about that as well. Once you understand how gas works, you'll have a better understanding of these optimizations later on down the road. That's all I got in this video. Stay tuned for the next one. Thank you for watching so far. Hopefully this has been, you know, pretty lightweight, fun way of learning Web3. I'm excited to see what happens next. We're almost to 500,000, which is huge. Thank you everybody who has subscribed. And hopefully these videos have been a blessing to you and not an annoyance. See you in the next one.